Oh no, she's gonna get it! And oh, barely stopped her. Um, oh, that's a lot of damage. And run, run, run! Chug, 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 chug! And back to full health. That was a great success. Yo, what's up, bros? Copa Cheese here. And I've got some coffee. Mmm. That's good. <laughs> no, I'm kidding, but. So today we are doing a daily quest for Heroes of the Storm, which is play one Warcraft hero. And I've been playing the game for a little bit now, so I have got enough currency or gold or whatever you want to call it in order to purchase some new heroes. Therefore, I went ahead and got Falstad, which I've already done a video on, and that's because I really like him. He's an amazing assassin. And then I picked up Lily, who is just this insane healer, and I thought it would be great for me to uh, do first my daily quest and show you guys uh, another hero in the game. So since my last video, they've actually had a huge update, almost updating every single hero's talents. And on top of that, they added all these new voiceovers and they redid the entire UI. So the game is moving along really nicely. And I know a lot of people actually are getting into the alpha now. In fact, my brother got uh, selected somehow. I don't know how he got in um, because he doesn't know anyone and he's just signed up for the beta. So you guys, if you want to get into the game, should sign up for the beta. But uh, I've been talking enough. Let's jump into the gameplay and uh, see how Lily works out. All right, so starting off, we actually have five options for talents. And don't look too far into which talents I'm taking because, again, this last patch, they changed, majorly changed, a lot of talents for many various different champions. So this could be uh, changed before you even get a chance to look at the game. So, in any case, I'm actually going to take Path of the Wizard. This is a common talent that is on various different heroes, and it basically just allows me to spam my abilities without running out of mana. At least I think it does. I, I need to do some more testing to see if I actually am always out of mana when I don't take that ability. And then I could take, you know, maybe more damage or something like that. In any case, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna focus on a full out healing Lily spec. There's there's obviously options for doing more damage and more utility in terms of damage dealing in general for your teammates. But Lily works out in a, in a way such that, uh, what it's kind of funny their name's Lily. I'll say this because if you play League of Legends and you know what Lulu is, she's very similar in some of the things that she can do. <laughs> so I have this little healing spell that will toss out, you'll see it, it's very short cooldown, this little healing spell right here just throws out a little chug a chug chug I don't know whatever it is it's basically a brew and it gives them a little tiny bit of health but on again a very very short cooldown and later on I will actually modify it to do even more healing so we're up against a pretty tanky dual warrior lane but since we have Nova who's able to dish out mad deeps and normally she would die pretty quickly to them because they would just focus her down, but since I can heal them constantly, heal her constantly, then she's gonna be able to just put out big amounts of damage. Now we actually almost took out Diablo there, would have been very nice. And what I'm gonna do here on Lily is I, I've got this little dragon I can put on their head. You'll notice this little weird looking dragon that uh, is put up on their head eventually. And that's my second ability. And what it does is it actually for a couple of seconds will just target enemies and attack them for a decent amount of damage. Now I've already modified, I think that second talent I took was uh, a modification that actually gave it uh, healing and mana buff for my ally. Well, what it does is it restores mana and life. So it's like a second healing ability. And it really makes it hard for enemies to push out myself or my allies out of the lane because we just stay up full health and mana pretty much the entire time. And we won that first team fight there. We came down. We we basically took Diablo and Arthas down so low. Yeah, now they just got to the fight, but it's too late because we've already grabbed it. I'm going to try and take them out. What I would like to do, I know that taking mercenary camps is extremely important. I can't really solo them. I don't have a lot of damage on Lili. I'm more of just like sustain and team heals. So what I'm going to keep doing is I'm going to ping all of the mercenary camps, and hopefully my allies will come with me and we'll grab those camps. All right, so what I've done now is I've actually modified my little sip there and I think this was it's either called brew or sip or something like that anyways 
I modified it to do extra 25% healing. I think there was another one that allows you to actually heal yourself. But I don't really worry about that too much. It is very nice if you're in a situation where there's a lot of AoE damage coming in. But I'd rather just heal for a large amount in general. So anyways, we are pushing pretty heavily here. The reason being that they cannot actually push out and kill us. He can come out and do some damage to us, but I'm going to heal it all the way back up to full before he has a chance to really stop us. Now, they are going to that next tribute, so we're going to have to chase him down. He snuck his way out of there before I could knock him off of the horse, and they did grab the Merc Camp. This is what I'm talking about, how those Mercenary Camps are so extremely important. They're doing a lot of damage to our Fort Gate right there, and we can't stop to fight it because we are fighting over the tribute. So if you're able to grab those Merc Camps in between the tribute spawns, it's going to make it a lot more difficult for your enemies to respond both to the tribute and to both defend their uh, town at the same time. So we did lose the gate there, as you can notice. Our towers did eventually kill those mercs, but if somebody was able to continue pushing after that, that could have been a little bit more difficult for us. In any case, I did ping it so that we can go grab the large golem. I know that since we have two tributes right now, this is the best time to take this big golem. So or really any merc, any of the good merc camps is, is a good time because of the fact that once we grab the next tribute, if we do, which hopefully we do, we're going to have that huge merc camp pushing in on top of a base that cannot defend itself. And that's really powerful. So here we go. We're just going to go right on through and shove this down. Even if we didn't go grab that tribute and they sent their whole team to fight for it, then we would be able to probably take this fort ourselves anyways. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to stay here and fight with Diablo. So, you know, worst case scenario, we have a 4v4 down there, and I'm pretty sure they can handle themselves already. And I'm trying to fight Diablo. I don't have a lot of damage. Again, I'm Lili. I'm not exactly an assassin, but I can sit here and sustain myself for quite a long time. And Diablo did run away there. We got the tribute. Therefore, none of these towers are going to attack us, and we're going to take this fort easy peasy. So there goes that one. Now, the best thing to do whenever you have all three tributes is to have, you know, maybe... Three people pushing one lane, and then you have one in the middle and then one in the bottom, for example. That way, if they send everyone to defend the group of three, then you guys can either fight back or push back or whatever, and then you still have people taking the other towers. Now, we only have one person doing this. We have Falsad down on the bottom lane. He is going to grab this fort, which is great, but no one was in the middle, so no big deal. I died because I kind of misclicked and walked into the enemies like a derp. What I like to take here is this hindering wind. So I haven't talked about my third ability. My third ability is this little tornado looking thing. And it's uh, basically auto targets. If you try and push it, for example, if I were to use it right now, it would do nothing. You have to use it whenever you are next to some enemies. And it shoots out these three tornadoes that kind of auto target the closest enemies. And I just took a talent that slows down any enemy hit by that little tornado wind thing. There's also some other talents where you can make it do more damage, where you can make it blind. Oh my god, that Snipe Nova with the call down strike. That was pretty insane. But anyways, uh, yeah, you can modify it to where it'll like attack five people. It'll do more damage. It blinds the enemies so that they miss their next two attacks. There's a lot of different modifications for that blinding wins. The only one I really take is that one right there, the slow, because whenever I play Lili, or at least I haven't, I've only been playing it for like five, ten games between there anyways not that not up to 10 but anyway I'll, i i've uh, i've noticed that i just want to stay alive as much as possible so I, if i can get people to chase me they, it's really funny because they can't kill me i've got those two healing spells and then i start to use that thing that uh that slows them down now what i've taken here for my ultimate is this little keg where i can turn on the keg i can't use any abilities during the activation period but as you notice there it just heals the crap out of myself i don't know why i ran back in there i just made a huge mistake for some reason, this game, I was just playing like a uh, really weird with my clicking. I was just clicking back into the enemies because I was paying too much attention on just like killing my allies and I wasn't realizing where I was standing. So whatever, pretty stupid. <laughs> Not a big deal though. So for this particular talent, there's another five to take. Lili is, is really interesting because she has so many different talent options that can make her playstyle quite a bit different depending on what you decide to do. So I can actually... Take the two for one talent, which will allow me to throw out two heals for one cast of it. But in this particular game, there's a lot of CC, especially with Arthas. So what I decided to do is make it so that whenever I use Sip, it actually removes all crowd control. And that's awesome because it's going to make it really impossible for them to lock me down consistently, which is what they have been doing in 
that's how they've been killing me so easily. So, once again, we're going to be taking that mercenary camp. Boom! And heading up to the top. So, we're doing really well here. They're actually staying kind of up with us somewhat in level. We're two levels higher than them at this point because at this point in the game, we're doing quite well. However, they definitely have a strong enough team that we have to be careful. They've got a lot of CC and a lot of ways to lock us down. On the other hand, though, we have a lot of damage with Nova and Falstad. Once we get into a fight, we're going to just destroy stuff. Looks like it's two mercenary camps coming together. I'm going to look for a time to throw in my ultimate. So my ultimate is insane, you'll see here. Just watch my allies' health. And you can see they just pops right back up. It gives them mana, it gives them health. It's very difficult for enemies to really uh, clear us out whenever I turn on that ultimate. I mean, it is ridiculous and once again I just walked right into the face of Arthas and got destroyed that's unfortunate anyhow we were able to push that in for just a little bit we got a couple of kills uh, and by a couple I mean we killed Diablo and then I died <laughs> whatever anyhow we do have a Gazlo who doesn't seem to be doing the standard strategy that I showed you guys in my last Gazlo video where I just take mercenary camps constantly but he's still doing fairly well he's just walking up into team fights throwing down his laser. I do know that if you spec Gazlo a certain way, you can actually make his laser do quite a lot of damage and have a decent amount of poking utility, for example. So they've already got two tributes at this point, and we really need to make sure they don't. No one is actually at the tribute on our team, so I'm running to it. And in fact, it looks like their nose is about to get it, but I look, just barely got there with the tornado. And oh my god, I have to stay alive because I'm about to take a lot of damage. I'm going to turn on my ultimate and watch my ultimate just heal me up for so much life. I was at basically one or two hits from dead, and after pushing my ultimate, I go all the way back up to full health mana. That is ridiculous. That's right there, the power of Lily that I'm trying to show you. And right after taking the tribute, I'm trying to tell my ally, I said, dude, hey, come over here and get this golem because we are going to kick some booty. This is a good time for us to grab the golem because since we won that tribute fight, we know that they were actually fighting up north and there's a very likely chance that the enemy won't actually see us taking this since we decided to do it so quickly. But either way, that is good. They now have a ogre camp, which is not too big of a deal. Going up towards the top, and we, of course, got the golem. And I didn't even realize that my team was coming around here. And that's a lot of damage, but, like, come back here! Turn on my ultimate! Yeah, I turned on my ultimate, and it was like the false dad was running away out of the range, and I could not heal him. That was really sad. But either way, he stayed alive, so that is good. And we're going to turn this back around. Or just going to go down, now we're going to be turning our attention to the Nova. And hopefully we should finish her up. Just a couple more auto attacks. And there's the barrel roll from Falstad and Beasted. Diablo is the last one up here. Put in his ultimate. Damn, he stunned all of us. That hurt quite a bit, actually. And I'm going to do my best to keep healing up everyone. I'll be putting on the Serpents on top of people's heads, which heals them and does lots of extra damage as well. And my ultimate is already back up, so if I need to, I can use that. And since I just hit level 20 there, I my ultimate actually heals for way more, in fact. So you'll see in these team fights in a second, most likely I'll be able to just almost make it impossible for them to kill off any of our allies. So we can we can basically just sit here and continue to push. We have this golem. You see how powerful it was for us to go, oh, okay, and I just messed up. I ran in the middle of everyone, but I turned on my ultimate, and look at our health, man. They cannot move our health bars there, but we need to get out of there. It looks like we've only got three of us, and uh, other our two assassins are not even anywhere to be found. So... I'm going to do my best to get out of there. Again, I can do this little thing. Look, slows them down. Falstead comes back in here and tries to actually turn around the fight. So I was like, okay, I guess I'll turn around the fight. We did kill Arthas. It wasn't worth it. We lost two people and only killed their Arthas. By the way, it is fairly even on that sense. But unfortunately, they actually had a perfect spawn. And there's... Oh, man, he just barely missed that ultimate. There was no real reason for him to go in there. They were going to get that regardless. But basically all he did was allow himself to die and they still get the tribute. So that's the same kind of concept where in League of Legends, you know, it's like, why defend your turret if it's going to die anyways? And then if you stay there to defend it, you're going to die too. What's the point of that? Just get back and go to another fight that makes more sense. That's kind of my take on it, but no big deal. I'm not talking strategy here. I'm just trying to show you guys Lily. So, um, so anyhow... I'm pretty much fully talent spec out to do lots and lots of healing. Now, this is the first game I actually have used the large jug of healing. And that's because 
a lot of the games that I've been playing on Elili have been games where I've been kind of by myself or only with one other ally, and we've been splitting up and doing various things like that. So whenever I play Lili as a solo-ish ish type of character where it's not full on team fights the whole time which is this map pretty much always is oh my god well i'll tell you in just a second because we have a full on team fight right here happening and unfortunately they grab that golem before we can stop them and oh my god lots of damage but i'm gonna turn to my ultimate and booyah you cannot stop it look at that health that is coming back in we pretty much fully healed and i'm gonna go turn my attention back onto arthas and i'm about to go really low here but i have the sip and it just barely kept me alive before we were able to finish off kerrigan that is insane and luckily we can finish off this golem while we're here we got the pretty much uh old whole team except for falstad who is defending bottom they are pushing pretty hard down there so what i was going to say is whenever i'm soloing stuff instead of that little jug of healing i'll actually take a ability that is this big dragon serpent that will fly out and attack the first enemy and slow them down for like three seconds for 60 percent it's ridiculous and then whenever i take my level 20 talent it actually will shoot a second dragon after the first one hits so it ends up doing i think like 1800 damage whenever i'm around this level it's really ridiculous it's just like massive amounts of damage and allows me to basically become an assassin myself that just cannot die and uh, I guess finally I'll talk about my passive. So you see it looks like I have that little sprint icon where my passive should be. And essentially every time I take damage, I will gain extra move speed. So it makes it really easy for me to run away. And I got tossed over by Diablo. So I'm like, all right, whatever, I'll just run this way. We did finish him off and I dodged out the stun. His little ultimate global stun there is dodge, no big deal. And we killed their entire team. That's all five down. And it is just Nova and I still alive. So I can go ahead and push with the golem here myself. But I, I'm trying to calculate if we actually have enough damage to finish off their thing in time. And I don't think I do because, again, I'm Lily. I don't do that much damage. So what I'm going to do instead is I'm going to run right up here. I'm going to take the tribute. This is going to make sure that none of their turrets will attack us. None of their... Uh, none of their minions will have any life and that's pretty much going to finish the game I believe um, So just playing it the safe route here I'm going to go ahead and focus down this front here see if I can get a fort down just in case they are able to defend us Because again, it's just Nova and I here and we're probably going to have to be careful if Nova dies there It's going to make it more difficult uh, Luckily she plays it smart she backs off as well and we're going to wait for the team to kind of catch up And I'm going to do my best to stay up in the front here and just kind of soak up some XP Looks like we have some more of the allies here. And I'm going to go for the gank onto Kerrigan. See if she tries to focus me down. And she's starting that fight a little bit soon. Because the rest of our team's here. Big ultimate coming in from Arthas to try and slow us down. The ultimate from Diablo not really locking any of us down. We just kind of juked out of the way. And we're going to take down this fort. Since it cannot attack us back. Missed Nova ultimate from the enemy team. No big deal. But that uh, Rainer ultimate is going to push us into their base. No big deal. I've got the cask. And that's going to keep all of us healed up. I wasn't able to finish off Rainer right there, but I'm going to keep on throwing out the sips and healing up my allies, putting down those cloud servants and keeping everyone topped off very nicely. At this point, they really just cannot push us out because of the careful play. Oh my god, that was really close. It looks like they did take down Gazlo, but yeah, they can't really push us out because we have that careful play. We've got all of the sips, all the heals coming in. At least that's what I thought. And finally, they do end up actually clearing out three of our allies However, at the cost of losing their base and losing the game. That's GG, guys. Thank you for watching. This is Lily. She's ridiculous. Heals the entire team. Heals herself. Gets away from danger. And does an okay amount of damage. Nothing crazy. But either way, it's ridiculous. I love it. Hopefully, you guys enjoyed this one. And I'll see you around for the next one. Make sure to subscribe to see more. And uh, watch some of my other videos. Peace out, bros.